the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, God shows no partiality in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is acceptable, what is right is acceptable to him. Today we celebrate Easter. This is a celebration that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to an unbeliever, and for those who believe in Jesus and the story of resurrection, there are still questions left. There is a certain amount of confusion surrounding this story. I want to say it in the, sto- in the way that a little girl expressed the story of Jesus. According to her version, Jesus was born just in time for Christmas up at the North Pole, surrounded by eight tiny reindeers and the Virgin Mary. Then Santa Claus showed up with lots of toys and stuff and some swaddling clothes. The three wise men and elves all sang carols with the little drummer boy and Scrooge helped Joseph trim the tree. In the meantime, Frosty the snowman saw this star. For several years after that, a pilot drove him around until one day they had a fight and Jesus was given a cross. He carried it. There were thieves around him at the time, but they could not steal anything from the Lord Jesus because he was lifted up in a bungee cord by his father. That is the story of Jesus, according to a little girl. There is some confusion because it doesn't make sense. How can somebody rise from the dead? Al Smith was once a governor of New York. He was doing his first tour of the New York prison when the warden asked if he would address the inmates. The governor was taken by surprise, but he agreed. His awkwardness was revealed when he began like this, my fellow citizens. Then he stopped and then he thought for a while, not too many maybe in the prison are citizens, so he needs to correct it. So he thought and he said, my fellow convicts. And then he knew he made a mistake again. So he stopped and tried again. He said, Well, anyhow, I'm glad to see so many of you here. (laughs) I am too. I'm so glad you are here. For whatever be the reason, this is a great occasion to come together. So my question to you is this, this day. Do you have a choice, and are you here because you made that choice, or because it is part of a tradition and you have learned to keep it. I want to say, as Americans, we still have a choice. And I believe you are here because you have made that choice yourself. Surrounding the story of Lent and Easter is a story of a pastor who was explaining to his congregation the events that led Christians to the day of resurrection. He said the Romans crucified Jesus like a common criminal, and buried him like no one cared about him. But on the third day, the pastor continued, on the third day the stone was rolled away, and Jesus was not there. Then he turned to the children and asked the question, do you know what happened next? And one of the children who learned all these stories from her school said, Jesus turned into a zombie, and he's running after those Romans. I wish we could all do that to those we don't like. That we could turn into be a zombie and run after those people we do not care about, like, disagree, or whatever, in whatever be the reason. Now, none of us know if for sure 
there is a life after. We can believe it, but we none of us know. What assures us of the future is what cannot stand firmly on the ground, because it is called faith. Faith has absolutely no empirical evidence, and therefore, what we are standing on is something that has no basis in our worldly standards. This is why there is a place for virtual immortality. There is a place for virtual immortality. If you are struggling with life and the thoughts about life after, go to the computer and look up virtual immortality and plug in all those things that you expect the world to be, like for yourself, your dreams and your passions and your desires and the world that it should look like. Plug those data into this database and you will see the hourglass turning and turning and turning. Finally, it will spit out an image of your virtual immortality. And then there will be a disclaimer, until the policy changes. And then the policy changes and your immortality, the virtual immortality will end. That is where our faith comes into play. That is why that which we cannot scientifically prove, trapped by policymakers and code systems, need to come into our personal life. Christ, a tangible personal experience of God. That is what is Christ, and that is what this celebration is all about. Christ will become relevant and has to become relevant. There is one policy here, very simple, believe and behave. That is the policy we are subscribed to in Christian faith. Believe in Jesus and behave like Jesus. That is the only thing that is substantial, and that is what we are celebrating today. I asked a question last Sunday. What difference does it make that you believe? The question that I asked is the key to the hallway of resurrection. That is the only way that the resurrection will make sense to us eventually. Our faith will die without it. What difference is faith making in your behavior? Because that is the only proof of resurrection to someone who do not know Jesus. is the behavior of those who believe. Resurrection or Easter is all about a changed character, a changed behavior. After resurrection, Jesus could walk through the walls and become present in the world of suffering without the barriers of human making. You remember... The apostles were afraid and they hid themselves in a room because they were afraid of the people around them. And Jesus walked through the human barrier into the midst of the apostles. Resurrection has only one thing to do in our life. That gives us the courage and the grace to walk through the barriers that everyone has built for somebody else. That is the result of resurrection. The resurrection of Jesus tells us the behavior of the resurrected that can actually break through the barriers that separates mankind from one another. Resurrected life is about recognizing the brother and the sister that is separated at birth in religion and in society. According to Victor Stenger, a physicist, when faith rules over facts, Magical thinking becomes deeply ingrained and warps all areas of life. It produces a frame of mind in which concepts are formulated with deep passion, but without the slightest attention paid to the evidence. Blind faith is no way to run a world. Blind faith is no way to run a world. I'm going to agree with this guy, and say he is very right. Blind faith is no way to run our world of today. It is the only way we can run our personal lives and nothing else. Blind faith can only lead our personal lives. Faith is not a country's property 
unlike Constantine. It is always a personal property, and it is only meant for personal transformation, in which magical formulas, as Victor would say, will make us people like Christ. What made the man of Arimathea, Joseph, to seek the body of Christ, the visible criminal of the day, the outcast of the society, for safekeeping in his own tomb, was this magical faith that he personalized. It is the deep passion for the truth, truth that Jesus preached. Joseph endangered his security, his status, his life, and all that he believed in. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, resurrection is only meaningful to the believer. You are a believer not because of the evidence of faith, you can track, but because of the difference it makes to become relevant in this world like Mother Teresa or Mahatma Gandhi or Martin Luther King or Mr. Mandela because they have personalized their faith. Faith is not a belief in the stories of the past, it is a practice of the present. There is a beautiful story that was reported in one of the newspapers in England, and we have someone from England today, on March 12th, 2012. Jennifer Wilson and Catherine Millens are twins who were given up for adoption when they were 11. Their mother was very poor. They couldn't afford to keep these two children and bring them up. And so she gave them up and two parents, two wonderful people, adopted them, and that was the last time they saw. After one of the adopted parents' death, this woman, Jennifer, who was adopted, decided that she is going to find her sister, twin sister. She searches, and she searches, and finally she finds this woman after 67 years, she finds Kathleen Millins living down the street from where she was. They were separated at the age of 11. And when they found the other, life was changed. Life is changed forever. This is what I believe about each and every one of us. We are brothers and sisters. We are friends separated at birth from one another. We have to find each other, and then we will find a world that is changed around us. That is the message of the resurrection. It helps us to go right through a brick wall that separates us, that creates obstacles in which we do not recognize the other in the name of philosophy and theology, traditions and history, and contemporary beliefs. We are able to walk through the wall that separates us. And then there is a resurrection. Then there is a new life. And that is what this is all about. And that's what Jesus does to the apostle, walking through the doors into the midst of those people who are afraid of a world outside of them. We have philosophers among us. And you know very well the face of the other in its nudity and in its defenselessness, signifies, do not kill me. A French philosopher, he says, the naked face of the other tells loud and clear, do not kill me, have compassion on me, watch me, accept me as your brother and as your sister. That is the message of the resurrection, and that is what the apostles were afraid of, and that is to whom the Lord appears through the walls that separated Christ and the world and the apostles. So this day I invite you to behave like Jesus and walk through the barriers to holy relationships into the frightened moments of the other just like Jesus as to his apostles. Believe in Jesus and behave like Jesus. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Alleluia.
Please stand and let us pray together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the 